Yep. And I'll let people know that I'm recording. So if they don't want right. to be on screen. Sounds good. Awesome. All right. I've got 659. So great. I have the weirdest thing. My computer, the time is wrong on my computer. Oh, no. I think, you know, like your phone, it gets it from you know right. the cloud, it would be right. It's Wherever. not it's yeah. like five minutes off, which is very annoying when you're trying to run meetings. That's like very this. strange. Five minutes is a strange number to be off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's all right. Mine was off by 10 minutes until I connected to the Wi-Fi. Oh, jeez. Oh, all right. Um, all right. I have seven. seven so if you guys are ready, I'm going to let everybody in. Uh, ready. Where'd we go? Where is everybody? Oh, for Pete's sake. I might be able to help you with that also. Do you want me to let them all in? No, I got it right here. Okay. You got them? Okay. <laughs> I think I got them all. Awesome. Looks like we got about 12 people. Welcome everybody as you're all getting connected here. Um, I am going to be recording uh, this presentation. So if you do not want to be on camera while it's recording, um, go ahead and uh, turn your camera off. Um, I also will ask that for the moment, everybody remain muted um, so that we don't get feedback or anything like that. Um, but we will get started, just try to make sure everybody's in and nobody's like stuck <laughs> in limbo anywhere. Mm. Um, I think everybody's in. So, um, my name is Patty Spencer, and I am an admissions counselor at the College for Creative Studies. So this is housing from the inside. Um, so welcome, everybody. Glad we have a bunch of people here, which is great. Um, and I am going to pass it off to Ryan Harrison, uh, and he is going to take it from there. So I will monitor the chat. Um, so if you have questions as we go through, you guys are welcome to put them in the chat. If I can answer it, I will. If uh, we need to have Ryan do it. We'll definitely have him do it. And then we also have one of our awesome RAs with us, Cameron Sherman. Um, so again, if you don't want to be on camera, keep your video off and I am recording. Thanks everybody. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, my name is Ryan Harrison. Uh, I am the director of housing for the College for Creative Studies. Um, I got my role in 2013, July of 2013, so I am closing in on my 10-year anniversary here. Um, just to give you a, a little bit of background about myself, um, I was in residence life um, during my um, undergrad. I was an RA for four years, um, and then I was um, in, when I got into grad school, I was an assistant hall director. Um, for two years, and then my final year, I was a um, uh, I was a hall director. It was kind of a unique position, but I was a hall director, but had supervision. Um, so uh, anyway, I've been doing this a long time. This is this is my seventeenth uh, year in residence life uh, on the whole. So um, this is something I'm familiar with and passionate about. Um, just a little background on my education as well. I uh, went to Western Michigan University. I'm a Bronco. Um, and I uh, got my undergrad in psychology. I got my graduate, my graduate work was in education counseling. Um, and, um, you know, so, so what that means for you as a prospective student is um, my main focus um, is that I want to train RRAs with um, listening skills, empathy skills, uh, mediation skills, um, we are, our, our main focus for our RAs is to build community, build connection, um, be responsive if, you know, if students are having a hard time going through some mental challenge, you know, mental health challenges. Um, we've got RAs here who are um, prepared and ready to listen, to create space, um, to put their, you know, put their self in, in your student's shoes or your shoes. Um, and so, um, you know, we, we want to create a space where you feel 
um, connected and cared for. Um, and uh, that's what we aim for. Um, I'd also like to, uh, before we jump into the presentation, I'd like to introduce uh, Cameron Sherman. He is um, one of our stellar rock star RAs. He volunteered this evening. He did the last one with me well. Um, and, you know, the dream team is back again. Uh, Cameron, do you want to introduce yourself real quick? Of course. Thank you for that amazing introduction. I don't <laughs> think I can beat that. But, <laughs> hello, I'm Cameron Sherman. I am a first a year RA. I am the RA for the sixth floor at the ACB. And yeah, it's a pleasure to meet everyone here. I'm also a junior in illustration. So just to let you know, I am an RA, but I also go to classes here, which is nice and fun. <laughs> but yeah, it's a pleasure. Yeah, to so we'll be, uh, we'll be hearing from, oh, go ahead. No, it's a pleasure. Okay, we'll be hearing from Cameron a little bit uh, later this evening. So I'm so sorry, Cameron. Um, we'll be hearing from Cameron a little bit later. He'll be talking about um, his experience, uh, not only as an RA, but also um, as a resident in the hall and a little bit about his educational experience as well. Um, so be ready for that. Um, so uh, let's jump into it now. I am going to share my screen. Uh, it's gonna be this one here. Sure. Very good. Okay. So um, you can all hear me, I hope, and you can see my screen. Yep, uh, everything looks Patty. good. Man. Perfect. Very good. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, so housing from the inside. These are the presenters we've already discussed. Okay. So, uh, um, I think what we're going to do first is we are going to start at the very beginning. So, um, so if you're interested in housing, uh, that means that um, if you're interested but haven't started going through the application process, I wanted to quickly discuss with you what our application looks like. Um, we have recently transitioned um, from an old system to a new system called Mercury. Um, that's a, a, a college campus uh, application management service. Um, and so uh, essentially what that system is going to do for us is it's going to gather demographic information. It's going to gather your uh, payment. And then um, what's really nice about this system is it's going to take your demographic information and it's going to intelligently place students together um, and try and get the best fit. So what we've done here is... Um, uh, we've created a space where, like again, first you're gonna um, you're gonna log in to the system, and again, this is for only deposited students. So if you are if you haven't yet made your two hundred and fifty dollar payment, this system will not know that you exist yet. So once that two fifty um, is paid, it's about forty eight business hours, and then um, your information will be populated in Mercury. And what that means is it's going to take the demographic information. Um, that you submitted during your application process, and it's going to import it right into the housing application. So you won't need to fill in name, cell phone, uh, address, those types of things that you've already given to, to CCS. We've got it in housing. Uh, <clears throat> instead, what you'll be able to do is it's going to, um, there's going to be a few demographic things that we would like to know in addition to what you submitted um, to uh, admissions. Uh, but we're also going to ask you a few things um, about who you are and how you live. Um, the most important being we've got a, uh, a list of five questions that are questions that we uh, picked specifically because <clears throat> our experience with uh, roommate challenges revolve around the five topics that we've selected. Uh, and so what that means is we ask you... Um, you know, about when you like to go to bed, how you like to share things, what volume you like to keep things, those types of questions. And so it will, it will look at the five questions you've, the five questions that we've asked, and it will, again, intelligently place you with other students that also considers um, age and um, major and those types of things. And so it's going to look at everyone and all of their requests, and it's gonna say, here's the way that we can make as many people happy as possible. Uh, on the system, you will also be able to submit um, it, your preference being in the Art Center building or your preference being in the Taubman Center. And then um, it will take that into account as well. 
Uh, okay, um, so uh, I, I would like to talk a little bit about um, uh, the process um, as it stands today. Um, as we've been implementing the process, we've had some challenges with our payment company that we work with and Mercury. Those two systems are still trying to connect with each other. We've, we've had a couple setbacks in that space. So if you were to apply today, you'd be able to submit all of the demographic information and then you'd be stopped at the payment portion. We anticipate the second week in May that that system will be functioning. And once that system functions, everyone who submitted an application will receive an email with a link prompting you to make your payment. Okay, so um, once that link gets sent, you'll have about two weeks to make that payment. And once that payment is done, we'll run the IntelliSign. And IntelliSign is that uh, the program I was talking about that matches everyone together. So you'll make your $300 payment. You'll then have the option after that to create roommate groups if you choose. And a roommate group is basically, if me and Cameron wanted to live with each other, I would create a roommate group. I would invite Cameron to it. He would accept it. And then the system would see us as a duo. And so when it's looking to place people, it will only place us together in a two, you know, in based on my preferences, because I was the person who created the roommate group, but based on my preferences, it will place the two of us together. Okay. And then, so if you don't come in with a roommate group and you're just looking to go in blind, which many students do and it works great, um, once that happens, you'll be able to, um, you'll then have access to see who your new roommates are and it'll also give you their contact information. So you'll be able to get started on, um, you know, what to bring, uh, you know, kind of start talking about your expectations of living with one another and kind of, you know, what you're hoping for and uh, what you like to share, what you don't like to share. Those conversations are really smart to have beginning in the summer so that if you end up finding that this isn't a good fit, we have a lot of time for me to fix that before we get to campus rather than if you don't connect at all and then you get together and realize that this is kind of, um, this is, there's not a solution here. That becomes much harder to fix once every people, you know, once people have moved in, obviously. Um, so that's our, our new housing application. Um, it's new to us. We're still, um, you know, we're still getting comfortable with it. We're still building our muscle memory on, you know, how to make everything work. But we're very excited about its uh, new functionality. Um, and it, I think this is going to be a real asset for us as we move forward. <clears throat> All right. Okay, um, so I think what we will, um, where we'll start is, um, let's, let's get started with the two buildings on campus. Um, we have the Art Center building here, and we also have the Taubman Center. <clears throat> the Art Center building is our traditional um, uh, apartment style space. So for incoming students, you'll have two options. And these, are, these are also things that you can put into your request if you like. Um, in the apartment spaces, we have a two-bedroom, four-person space, um, and that space has one bathroom for four students. It also comes furnished, so that means a bed per student, it means four drawers per student, and it means designated hanging space per student. We also provide in the room um, a couch, coffee tables, uh, I'm sorry, one coffee table, and um, three uh, bar stools, stools, uh, bar stool chairs, bar stool height that are for each space has um, like a designated uh, breakfast nook or or large countertop, however you would define that. Um, but there is sitting space for eating in each of the spaces. Um, the kitchens are also um, full kitchens, so that means a full fridge and a um, stove and range as well. We do not provide microwaves, but those um, all the spaces in the Art Center building are fire rated for any type of um, uh, kitchen appliance. So you are uh, more than welcome to bring anything that you'd find in a kitchen. Um, yes, so, so that would be the Art Center building. Um, the other thing that's provided in the Art Center building is we also have uh, three bedroom, six resident spaces and those rooms have two bathrooms per room. So you would only share a bathroom with two others, so three total per bathroom. 
um, the art center building also has um, a laundry room that has um, two washers and two dryers on every other floor. So, um, you know, it's basically a washer and dryer per floor. Um, so it, 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 it works out pretty well. And uh, new um, after COVID is all laundry services are free to all housing students um, year round. So we got rid of quarter machines. Um, that's just rolled in the price of housing. Um, so so that's, a, that's a nice service for us. <clears throat> okay, the Taubman Center is our more um, traditional dormitory style. Um, and so like when you're thinking of a dorm in your mind, um, it looks more like the Taubman for us. Um, they, are, um, they are extended ceilings. So uh, it is, um, it, it's, you know, in terms of space, it, it's got a really, um, it's got, it's got a lot of space. And um, they also come with a uh, crawl up storage space. So once you've brought all, you know, your stuff here, you can put your luggage up there and, and anything you need to store can go up in the, the storage space. Um, the vast majority of the dormitories in the Taubman Center are three-person units, um, and that comes with one private bathroom for the room. Um, that space, unfortunately, is not fire rated for uh, kitchen appliances. However, you can bring uh, a mini fridge, you can bring a microwave, you can bring a rice cooker, and you can bring an air fryer, which I highly recommend. That is a, a, a very popular item on college campuses these days. Um, and you can really accomplish a lot of uh, your cooking desires in an air fryer. Um, yes, yeah, so those rooms also come fully furnished. I'm sorry, one thing I also want to say about the Art Center building um, that's the same as the Taubman is all the beds that we provide are able to be lofted up um, by themselves without being a bunk bed. You can bunk the beds if you like, but you can also loft the beds up high so that you have, um, you can create some personal space underneath your bed. Uh, many students choose to, to make that their workspace. So they'll, they'll bring a desk um, and put that underneath. And so all the beds in the Art Center building, as well as all the beds in the Taubman Center uh, have that loftability. We provide all of the pieces um, in each of the rooms for you to be able to do that, including the support guardrail so that you can't roll out and fall out of bed. Those will all come standard in each room. And that's my uh, two-year-old daughter who is <laughs> not wanting to get her teeth brushed. Uh, so I apologize for that. Um, anyway, um, so the Taubman rooms also come with um, uh, a couch and a coffee table. Um, there is not eating space in there. So we do not have um, the, uh, the, the stools. Uh, but you would also have um, four drawers per student and some designated hanging space in those areas. Um, the last thing I would say about the Taubman Center is, um, although those rooms are a bit smaller than the Art Center building, our public space in the Taubman is much, much larger. Um, and so, uh, so basically the way that the Taubman is designed is, um, it's uh, all, of pub all the public space in the middle. There is one room which is all soft seating. There are no desks in the soft seating area. We want that to be a lively room where there can be, you know, television playing, people talking, people playing board games, people listening to music. That's the space where we want um, community to be built. And then we also have um, a workspace on every floor that is, you know, there's no carpet on the ground. There are just desks in there. And we want that to be a place for focusing, for art, for creating. Um, and so, um, you know, we want to we, we provide those spaces for you so that you can have a space for, you know, working, a space for socializing and a space for, you know, more private time, your own, your own space. And then finally, in the Taubman, each floor has one unique area. So on the sixth floor, we have one very large um, study room. So if the, the workspace in your floor is full. You can go to another workspace or you can go to the sixth floor that just has um, just chairs and desks, chairs and desks. Um, so there's always a space for you to work in the Taubman for sure. Um, we also have a very a small movie theater in the Taubman, which is pretty cool. We're very proud of that. Um, we have a really nice workout facility. We have a conferencing space and we also have a... Um, uh, like an entertainment space. So it's got pool and ping pong and um, it also has like a small little uh, movie area and such. Um, so that's that's a fun space for, um, so just kind of letting your hair down and playing a little bit. 
<clears throat> the art center building um, is mostly focused on the living areas. There's not much public space. On the ground floor of the art center building, there is a little bit of public space with a television and some couches. And then there is a small um, workspace, um, kind of a private workspace on the side of the main floor, but there is um, nothing nearly as robust as the Taubman Center. Um, what I like to tell um, incoming families, because sometimes they, they ask my opinion on, you know, what would I do? So um, if my uh, student was coming to um, CCS in the fall, um, I would highly recommend um, a first year student living in the Taubman Center. Uh, I say that because um, there is tons of research that campus involvement and campus connection, the people who are more connected, more involved uh, in the, not only in the, um, the culture, but also the programming and things that are going on on campus, there's a much higher percentage chance of graduating. And that's the goal here. That's what we're all trying to do. Um, and so the Taubman Center is a very quick and efficient way for you to meet many people on campus. A lot of students use those public spaces. Um, and so if you're working in one space and you find that you're working with other people often, those relationships just start to grow on each other. Um, and so using the public spaces, getting to know people, uh, it's very efficient. The, the Art Center building is a very nice space. It's very nice for students to live in there. But we find that the apartment rooms are so nice that sometimes people don't leave. And so it's you know, you kind of get comfortable in your own space and certainly you get along with your roommates, but you know, you want to build your first year a network of people around campus for many reasons. Um, you know, you want um, that, that social piece, um, you want the um, creative collaboration, you want to learn other techniques that other people, you know, it's, it's amazing how often like a transportation design students will, you know, have a craft student and they'll learn a couple techniques or a couple ideas on how to look at something different and then work that into their, their, own, their own craft. So it's a, um, um, it's a diverse and creative space. And so I would recommend as a first year student moving into the Taubman Center, and then I would take the three closest friends that I met that year, and I would move to the Art Center building my sophomore year. Um, and so that, that's, that's what I would recommend, but um, you know, certainly whatever your living preferences are, um, are is your choice. You can tell the system whichever one you'd prefer. Um, if you'd like to uh, brainstorm a little deeper, if you want to ask me more questions, that's my whole job. So please always feel free uh, calling my office or sending me an email. I'm more than happy to have further discussions with you about that. <clears throat> okay, so um, a few other things um, that are on the living on campus section are our, um, our gender neutral housing policy. <clears throat> what our gender neutral housing policy means is that Students who are signing up for the GNH are saying that gender is not a requirement for my placement on campus. And so that, that means a lot of things. Um, you cannot be in the gender neutral housing space without signing up for it. So you will not accidentally be placed in a gender neutral, you know, gender neutral space. Uh, but if that is something that you want, um, you can tell the system that. So we ask you about gender neutral housing. Um, are you not interested? Are you comfortable in that space? Or are you actively looking for a gender neutral space? Um, and so, um, you know, we'll take, you know, you'll, we'll take that information. And if that's something you're looking for, we'll reach out and we'll see, um, we'll see kind of what your expectations are in terms of gender neutral housing. Uh, um, so, there are students who, who use this system so that they can live with their partner. So sometimes we will just have, um, you know, straight cis people who choose to use that to live with their partner. We will sometimes have, you know, people who are transitioning or have already transitioned, uh, people who do not identify as, you know, cis male, cis female. Um, these are just people who are saying, gender is not a part of placement for me. Um, and it's just kind of removed. So it's more about I'm looking for the compatibility rather than the gender match. Okay. Um, pardon me, that was our dog. Uh, so anyway, um, that's our gender neutral housing policy. When you are signing up on the system, um, there will be a link to our um, kind of FAQ page about gender neutral housing. There'll be plenty of information there that you can check out. 
And then um, if you have further questions, again, please feel free to reach out to me. That's what we're here for. Um, and if you have a very specific need and you know housing is something you're a little bit worried about in terms of that placement, please reach out to me. Let's talk about your needs and then we can see what we can do to help uh, you feel comfortable and safe because that, that's my job. That's what we're here to do. <clears throat> okay, um, so the other thing that's uh, listed on here is the um, emotional support animal policy on campus. Um, again, you can find that document um, here at the, the website provided. Um, it, it, it basically talks about the documentation that we would need from your doctor uh, to bring an emotional support animal on campus. Uh, unfortunately, we do not allow pets. This is, um, this is only for a doctor prescribed animal. And again, as I said many times, if you have any further questions about um, those policies, please make sure you let me know and I'm happy to talk through those with you. Um, lastly, we already talked about the room and furniture details, um, but uh, I, I do want to say at this website, um, we also have a very large, it's, I don't know, it's like 25 to 30 page document that talks about everything you need to know at housing. Um, it's, it's organized in such a way where, um, you know, the first step is kind of move-in information. The second step is information that we think that you want to know on day one. So it talks about where the laundry are, how you can get connected with food, how you can set up getting mail on campus. Um, and it also talks about here are some things that you are not allowed to bring to campus, so leave them behind. So you will want to have read through that document before you leave for campus so that you're not only mentally prepared for um, you know, the policies that you're coming up with, but you're also not putting stuff in your car that you can't bring on campus. And um, yeah, and if you have a question on something, let me know, we can talk through that. We, we, we list what, what is common, but we can't list every single thing that might, may or may not be allowed. So if you have questions about it, reach out and let me know. Um, so off-campus housing, we, um, we, CCS specifically does not offer off-campus housing um, but we do have some search tools that you can find. Um, so we offer some tips on how to search in the area. We have tips on how to um, you know, apply for your first apartment uh, and those types of things. So we give you resources to search, but we do not make recommendations and um, we do not have any CCS affiliated, affiliated uh, off-campus housing spaces. Um, so yeah, these are the resources we have. You're certainly welcome to call us if you have further questions, but the vast majority of our resources are on here. Um, so that is that. Whew, okay, so um, a couple things about dining. We have a full robust cafeteria in the Taubman Center. Um, if you live in the Taubman Center, uh, the meal plan is required. So um, here are the two meal plan options. Um, the, this is our small meal plan, $725 per semester. That's very important because when you are signed up for the meal plan, it is a two semester agreement. So um, you know if, if you sign up for it and you have it, it's definitely coming in the, in the winter as well. So I wanna make sure that, that you're aware in the Taubman it's required, in the Art Center building it's not required. However, if you do sign up for a dining meal plan, you are signing into an agreement for two semesters. So um, we, you know, we give you an opportunity to, to back out of it up until move-in day. We even double check on move-in day that a meal plan is what you want. Um, but once you're into that agreement, um, you're in for the academic year. Okay, um, we also do have a smaller cafeteria on the Art Center building, uh, I'm sorry, on the Ford campus where the Art Center building is. It is not as robust as the um, Taubman Center one. However, um, it does sound like there will be um, some improvements made over the summer. I think they're, we're working with um, our food service vendor to um, make that a bit more robust. Um, but I, not yet sure what that's going to look like. Uh, I've been told they're working on it, uh, but it doesn't sound like we have firm details just yet. Um, and then on both campuses, we have a 24 hour, uh, seven days a week. Um, they're called extended vending. And so basically what that means is our food provider 
will, you know, pre-make sandwiches and salads and whatnot, and then they'll pack them and put them in um, these refrigerators, and then you can come in and build meals and um, snacks and such. Um, so, you know, you, you can, you do have access to food 24 hours a day, seven days a week, if that's something that you need. Okay, so um, a couple things, I have just a couple more spots before I turn it over to Cameron. Um, you know, one of the first questions I get asked most often when I'm doing info sessions is talk to me about safety. Um, you know, my student living uh, in a downtown um, for the first time makes me nervous, so um, help me feel at ease. So CCS is one of the safest colleges, uh, college campuses in Michigan. Um, we have a really talented, excellent security staff on campus. Um, I like to tell families that there are five points of confirmation to get from, um, you know, basically the street up to a resident's room. Um, so the first one would be that we have a um, security guard who is uh, watching cameras 24 hours a day, seven days a week of all of campus, both campuses. We have a team on each campus. And so they're watching for anything that feels out of the ordinary or suspicious, as well as a security guard who is doing rounds, who's walking campus at all times. Um, so that would be the first step. The second step is, um, each building has its own unique ID card. And so um, if you live in the ACB, you only have access to the ACB. You do not have access to the Taubman Center. And so only residents who work in that building, I'm sorry, residents who live in that building and employees who work in those buildings have access. So, you know, theoretically, um, you, you know, like uh, uh, professors or, um, you know, those things. People who are not affiliated with housing do not have access. It is only for people who live there and basically my team and some security staff. And that's about it. Um, so we want to make sure the people who have access to those um, spaces need that access. Okay. So um, you need that unique ID to scan to get you into the front door. You'll then um, go to a security checkpoint where there is a a uh, human security guard sitting and screening every student who comes in and they are checking that your ID card matches both the building as well as the picture on the ID card matches the face of the person who's holding it. So they're double checking every time to make sure that you're supposed to live here. Even if they're close, even if they've done it a hundred times, they're still going to ask you for the ID card because we want to make sure that you are safe here. Okay. Um, you'll then need your ID card to scan to get up the stairs or the elevators. So that would be our next step. Um, in the Taubman Center, you then need to scan to get out of the elevator vestibule. And then finally, um, there will be um, every room has its own unique key slash ID card for scanning in. Um, so those are the five steps. We take security very seriously here. Um, so um, also with the security staff on campus, if you are, let's say you have a late class and you are leaving the Ford, you know, uh, the Walter B. Ford building at 10 o'clock at night, you feel a little bit unsafe walking to um, the parking structure. Um, our security staff would be more than happy to um, walk you from that door over to the parking structure. Each um, educational facility also has a staff member working there. So you could just go up to them and say, Hey, I'd like to, I'd like, um, an escort to take me to, um, the parking structure. And they'd be happy to do that. We also have a 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, CCS shuttle that, um, comes right up to, uh, the academic, uh, building in, um, the Ford campus and takes you to the Taubman center, um, the front door. Uh, and that happens, they, they run those about every 12 minutes. Um, and then at night after 11 p.m., they will take you directly to the front door of the Art Center building. So you can get from campus to campus uh, in a safe and efficient way. And that's free of charge for students as well. If we have students living on campus, that shuttle is running at all times. Um, the other thing I wanted to share is um, that we have a partnership with Wayne State you know, University Police. Um, those are not campus you know, security guards, those, those are fully sworn in police officers. It is a police department um, and their response time is about 90 seconds to campus. So if something happens and you need help, 
Wayne State will be there and they are ready to, you know, protect and serve. That's what they do. Okay. Um, so we are getting very close to the end of mine. Um, the very last thing I wanted to um, share with you is um, each floor does have um, a resident assistant, an RA. Um, Cameron is one of those people. And they are a peer on the floor um, who can help assist you. They're kind of like a connection between um, the pro staff that we have on campus and your students. Because, um, you know, sometimes it's nice to talk to someone your age who is understanding your experience a bit better. Um, and so they can kind of help with surface level questions. And then in both buildings, both the Art Center building and Taubman Center, we have full-time live-in professionals, both of whom have master's degrees in um, uh, higher education. Um, and so, you know, if, if something does end up happening that rises above the ability of a, an RA, um, then uh, that pro staff is uh, able to assist. And we will always have a duty rotation of pro staff members as well. So um, there is never going to be an, an opportunity where, um, you know, a, a full-time employee of the institution is not able to support um, with situations that arise. <sighs> okay, I've been speaking a lot. I think I'm, I have said the things I need to say. Um, I am going to stop sharing here. Let me get rid of that. And I am going to turn it over to Cameron. Uh, he's going to tell you um, a little bit about um, his experience living on campus, a little bit about his job and kind of what he's, he, he's here to support. Uh, and then we'll be able to um, open up for any questions that you may have. So Cameron, take it away. Thank you so much. Well, I think we'll start with the job as an RA. Um, for the ACB, there will be an RA on every floor. Uh, for TC, it's two RAs per floor. Uh, for me specifically as an RA, I am there to like um, make sure everybody's doing all right. I'll help plan events, maybe if particularly for the floor. Maybe it's for the school. Maybe it's just for the ACB. We have a lot of fun with that. Um, it's very much of... I talk to you guys, I see how you're doing. I check up on you like once a month to make sure you're doing all right. Um, what else do I do? For every week, an RA has the duty phone, which is this little antique here, a little favorite. Um, if there is an emergency or you just need to get a hold, you're locked out of your room, you'll call the duty phone number and two, two RAs will be on duty at that time, they, one of them will pick up and help you out the best of their ability. Um, well, we are also required to be on RA duty once or twice uh, a weekend throughout the school semester. Um, we also do housing tours once in a while as well, based on the basis of like, if it's necessary, but we usually do it at least once or twice. Um, yeah. That's for RA duty. Um, I can talk about the housing experience. It is definitely great. I, myself, I personally grew, uh, have been living on campus at the ACB my entire CCS education. Uh, I am friends though with people at the TC. So I, I guess I do understand a little bit what's going on there. But for ACB, it is, uh, it is a sense of being able to get out there and talk to people. I know it's a lot more closed in, a lot more people stay in their rooms at the ACB, but when it's a beautiful day outside, there are 30 students out on the lawn just chilling, working on homework and talking to fellow classmates. It's a wonderful experience. Uh, for classes, it's a, lot, it's a lot of illustration classes, photography, uh, fine arts happens at the Ford campus, which is where the ACB is. So I do recommend if you have classes there to come to the ACB, stay on there. If you're more like transportation or fashion, I recommend the TC, just in case you want those extra few minutes so you can roll out of bed and hit the class. <laughs> um, what else? I think I think that's the majority. Uh, for planning events, it can differ. For instance, it could be something small, like for instance, I did a small event called Leave Your Mark for everybody on my floor where we just had a 
giant piece of canvas on the table and just said, go wild, draw whatever you want. <laughs> Paint, you do whatever. And there are other events in which we possibly go places. I know one event we did, which was a big hit uh, earlier in the year was rock climbing. We went to Dino, a place about five minutes away. And I don't think we got a single negative comment. It was just a blast and everybody was happy to be there. Um, for clubs, I am the vice president of the VR Gravity Sketch Club. It's a very fun opportunity. We talk with Gravity Sketch and VR directly, so to get their input on it. There are other clubs. I believe there is, if you want to work out, since there are gyms, there are the gym rats at the TC and the gym brats at the ACB. Very fun experience. All wonderful people, too. And the RAs do try to get involved with those clubs as well. So we're RAs are like everywhere. All you have to do is look for us and we'll be there. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Cameron. Of course. All right. Uh, so that is um, the presentation stuff that we have prepared. Um, I want to turn it over now um, to any of you if you have any questions. I did um, take a quick peek uh, through the, um, the chat. And um, the one question I did see is, uh, is there a parking fee for first year students? Um, there is no parking fee for any uh, resident living on campus. Um, I do believe there is, um, I think commuters are able to park until midnight or one o'clock. And I do think there's a fee if you are trying to keep cars there over the even, uh, past one o'clock if you are a commuter. Um, yeah. Um, Ryan, okay. there was Any also a question. Ryan, there was also a question about how many spaces were available. I think in the Tom, and I think that's what she was asking. Kasana, if I'm not oh, sure. reading that right, you can unmute and let us know. No, that's great. Um, so. Um, the Taubman Center is about 60 residents per floor, and we have three floor, uh, five floors, excuse me. Um, and so um, that's our occupancy. Um, we have not yet run any type of placement because we are unable to run a placement until the, the payment portal is um, functional. And that's going to be, like I said, the second week of May. And so I would say mid to late May is when we're going to run our first placement. So as long as you have your applications in by then, there shouldn't be any challenges. So yeah, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to unmute yourself and ask either for Ryan or for Cameron. Um, if you don't know what to ask, you can also ask me anything about like housing before I was an RA. I was a regular student for two years, so I think I have some experience in that department. If you want to talk about how dealing with like roommates and, um, you know, that kind of chore list and how to be more active out in like CCS, just feel free to ask whatever. Uh, hello? Hello. Hi, um, so I'm a first year product design student and I'm uh, just taking all the regular basic classes first year and I'm still deciding like which campus to stay in. Do you have any uh, recommendations for that? Let's see, product. Um, it really depends on what classes you take. From what so I'm I taking know. like um, like three design, uh, 3D design, drawing one, and then like introduction to product design, composition one, stuff like that. I feel like most of those classes are in the forward building, so I recommend the ACB. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. I believe those are like the foundation level classes. So, yeah, that's all right. we all, all right. take place on the forward. Yeah. Appreciate it. Of course. No problem. Oh, we got a few. Ryan, can you maybe put that, oh, hold on, Ryan, you're muted. Sorry about that. You yep. Can you maybe put that uh, link to that document with the FAQs in it, in the chat for the students? Uh, which FAQ? For, for, the one, it was for in your which? presentation that has the information about, um, uh, like, the whole how oh, to yes. fill everything yes. out kind of thing. Yep, yep.
Yes, let me uh, pull that up real quick here. All right, so I'm going to put uh, two links in here. Okay, and this I first actually, link. While I'm you're gonna... doing that, um, I'm going to answer another question that somebody asked um, about the meal plans. Do they have to pay out of pocket or can they use your federal student aid? Your federal financial student aid and any scholarships that you receive, um, you know, pays for as much as possible. So um, if it includes your food, you know, it's not separate necessarily. Um, you know, if you have, I'm going to make up numbers. So if you have like, you know, $50,000 in aid or something like that, and that's, you know, your, your costs are $48,000, you know, then it'll all be covered. It's not a separate payment. Um, but if there is anything that's, that doesn't quite meet, um, if your aid doesn't quite meet it, you know, then that's something that you'll have to look at paying. If you're not sure about it, definitely look at your um, financial aid um, award letter. And if you have any questions, reach out to the financial aid office because they can absolutely go over it with you and also planning on how to pay any leftover, you know, costs that are there. We got two uh, quick uh, questions in here. Freshmen, are cars allowed? Yes, freshmen are able to bring cars. Um, there is no fee for that. If you're living on campus, just make sure you bring your driver's license and your car registration on move-in day. You can take those two items to the security office and they'll issue you a parking pass. Okay, for over the summer dorms, um, at least from my own experience uh, beforehand, since I was a regular student, I don't know if things have changed. We did have to leave. I think it's based on where you're located or where you're living. I believe if you're out of the country, I believe you're allowed to stay over the summer. Is that uh, um, those policies have, yeah, those policies have actually changed. All yes. active students are eligible for summer housing. Um, there are no longer any restrictions on that, and that's recently changed. So Cameron was correct, and uh, now that's changed. Um, uh, so Michaela, uh, the letter from your primary care doctor or your therapist for an emotional support animal would be the doctor with whom you've been working who has prescribed the emotional support animal for you. So an emotional support animal is a part of continued and ongoing treatment. And it would have been something that you and your doctor have worked with. So whomever you've set that up with is who um, would produce that letter for us. Good question. Okay, um, can you use federal aid to pay for the housing fee? Yes, we will be submitting your housing fee um, to your, uh, basically your CCS account. And so those dollars are seen the same as your tuition dollars. It's just what you owe CCS and your federal aid will go towards that one number. Good question. Um, is she asking about the the initial housing fee or just the cost overall though? That's the question. Because oh. oh. I think that's different, oh. right, Ryan? Yes, I see. So um, the initial $300 is, um, you cannot use your federal aid for that. So uh, if typically what students would do is they would submit that 300 ahead of time and then your, um, and then if you have federal aid, it will reimburse you that 300 once the process comes through. That $300 is not a fee, it's a first housing payment. So it is, when we accept that 300, your inevitable housing bill will be $300 less um, than it normally would be. So again, it's not a fee, it's not like a separate thing, it's just starting to chip away at your inevitable fee if that makes sense. Thank you for the clarification. I did not know, yeah. I didn't recognize that question. <laughs> I've had things like that a few times in admissions, so. <laughs> and yeah, then great, did you good, see perfect. That's a perfect. question about desks too. Oh, I'm so glad someone asked because I, I, now I realize I forgot to mention that. We do not provide desks on either campus. 
Um, we do that because different majors required different um, uh, different pieces of equipment. And so rather than try and figure out what works best for you and move things around, we just don't provide desks and try and um, give you space so that you can bring your own and what will work best for you and your craft. So, yeah. Uh, there are also like workstations in the buildings and yes. in the uh, workspaces, either on the ground floor at the ACB or at the TC in that workroom, if you feel like you do need some place to work at. Yes. Good follow up. Is there anything that disqualifies students from living on campus? Um, students need to be full time to live on campus. So that's 12 credit hours. Um, that would be the only thing that would disqualify you. I, I, if there's something in particular you have a question about, I can't think of anything additional off the top of my head, um, you know, other than if there's some type of policy violation, we may, you may lose your ability to live in housing, um, but there wouldn't be anything that would disqualify you initially. Yeah, I would say definitely um, reach out to Ryan and his office if you guys have specific situations or questions. They are really good about getting back to you guys. Um, they've probably heard just about every combination of questions. So, um, you know, and if you don't, you can always also reach out to your admissions counselor and start there. Um, sometimes we can answer some of the questions as well, but definitely feel free to reach out to their office for sure. Um, we are just not quite out of time, but we have a little bit, of, we're running out of time. Um, does anybody have any additional questions? These have been really, really good ones, by the way. Um, my name is Stefana. I have a question. So when you say full time, does that mean no outside jobs while you're in housing or is that a different, whole different situation? I may be a little bit confused. Oh yeah, sorry. So full time is in reference to your status as a student. So that would mean you are taking 12 credits or more of, um, of classes you are able to do, you know, you're able to work outside of class, uh, outside of CCS as much as you like. Um, you know, the, the, the thing that's nice about living in housing is, um, you know, this is your living space. You do not have any type of requirements. We do not have any type of curfew. You can use it as much or as little as you like. Um, you know, once you are paying that fee, it's yours and you, and you use it as you choose. So if you have other work off campus, um, you know, that's, that's your prerogative and, um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah it does. Thank you. It does. You're welcome. There's also a question about like furniture or, you know, other things to bring. Uh, actually, there were two questions on that, if you want to answer that one. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so I would say is um, maybe uh, trying to reference the, the packet because that we, we kind of list, we basically list here are things we suggest you bring and here are things we suggest you don't bring. Um, if, I, if I would briefly answer that question, like I remember when I was a first year student, I brought like a lazy boy, I brought an extra couch, I brought, we brought a whole bunch of stuff. And then all of a sudden, like we were really packed into our dorm room. And, you know, by October, we started kind of taking some of that stuff home to create a little bit more space. Um, so if you've got, let's see, um, big heavy appliances like a TV art desk or like a desk printer. Yeah. So, so it would be my opinion that you could accomplish a television, like probably one television in, in a room. So that would be a good thing to discuss with your, um, with your roommates to see like who's going to bring the TV. Um, and then once you are all in there, maybe organizing how you want to set that up. Um, uh, yes, you can bring your own desk in the art center building. You can loft your beds up high. If you're comfortable living up high, then you definitely, or I'm sorry, sleeping up high. You definitely have enough space to put a, a printer underneath. They are, uh, they are standard twin size. So that would give you the measurement on how much space you'd have underneath. 
Um, and then, you know, if your desk can fit your computer and your printer, then you can do that. Um, yeah. Um, okay, uh, Kalinka, that's a great question about LED light strips to put on walls since they're not nailed or would not be allowed. Okay, the only thing that you can use on the wall are those, uh, they're like 3M command strips. Um, if you use duct tape, you're going to rip the paint off and we're going to charge you for the paint being ripped off. Um, so if your LED lights can be supported by those 3M command strips, then yes. If they, um, if they can't, then no. Um, good question. Open flames are not allowed, so no candles. That's on either campus. That's on most campuses. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> most colleges and, and, are not going to allow open flame. <laughs> yeah, the 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 my little joke about that when people say like, well, why can't I have a candle? And my answer is always like, well, you're probably responsible, but think about your floor mates. Are you comfortable with all of them having open flames? And the answer is usually no. <laughs> um, uh, another thing is um, the ACB fire alarms are a little bit more sensitive than the TC ones. So, yeah, learn that the hard way when it came to. <laughs> uh, should I apply first time or transfer student? Uh, Patty, I don't know if you. Had, you I was just going to answer on... that one, but yeah, Philippe, if you Wait, are attending another college, um, then you are a transfer student. So, um, you know, you just check transfer student and we need your college transcripts from, if there's multiple colleges you've attended, we need transcripts from all of them. So, um, but you can always reach out for the, um, reach out to your admissions counselor or to one of us in the admissions office. I'll put that email here um, too. If anybody has any questions, I'll put the general admissions email down as well. Okay, I put a, a, a little link. Um, someone had asked about the command strips. So I, oh, oh, this was a direct message. Okay. I sent you a link, uh, what a command strip looks like. Yes, furniture can be brought in an, uh, another day besides move-in day. One other thing I can recommend as a parent um, <laughs> is, you know, you don't have to bring everything that first day. You know, Cameron's right. Um, you might want to start classes and decide, okay, do you need a big, you know, because you don't want to bring a big desk and then decide you really don't need it um, and it's taking up space, um, especially if you're coming from any kind of distance, you know, because you're in a big city. So it's fairly easy to get access to just about anything you need. Um, things like, um, you know, personal things from home or whatever, you could always get it at Christmas or something like that at your holiday break if you want to bring it to. Um, I would recommend um, uh, cold weather clothes, though, that you bring in the fall because uh, the <laughs> chance of the weather turning chilly before you go back home for the holidays is a good possibility in Michigan if you're not from our area. Uh, I think a um, question got, oh, sorry. I think a question got lost in the thing. Uh, I was talking about, would incense be included in that when it came to the candles? I was just going to um, say that, Cameron. <laughs> yes. Incense, it, it, incense will count. That is considered an open flame. But um, like essential oils are typically okay because those are, that's like water steam that like connects with water steam. So if it's about, you know, producing a smell, you can do that, but it would be essential oils over incense. And I see Philippe's question too. Um, this, we don't really have a summer semester right now at CCS. Um, we have a pre-college program for high school students, 
but it sounds like maybe you're, um, you know, a transfer student, so you wouldn't necessarily be eligible that. It's definitely not too late to um, uh, apply for the fall semester, which starts in August, though. So, um, you know, feel free to, like I said, reach out to the admissions office if you have questions or check out our website. All of that information is there for sure. Well, we are just about at time. Are there any other last minute questions? Um, I should also add for like, you know, since you, the essential oils, you can also have wall plug in uh, wall plugs for the fragrance. I believe that is allowed. Is that correct? I believe so. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Make sure you talk to your roommates. Make sure yeah. everyone agrees on the smell. <laughs> Okay, um, I think we are good. It sounds like we got a lot of great questions answered. This video will was recorded and I will have it posted on our uh, on our YouTube page sometime tomorrow. <laughs> um, and I really appreciate everybody showing up today and thank you to Cameron and Ryan for a great presentation and lots of great questions answered. So I'm sure there will be more going forward. Um, again, check those links, check our website, um, reach out to us with questions and we are all looking forward to seeing you in the fall. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks guys.